artists need inspiration. Where do you get your inspiration in today's China? Well, the most fascinating thing about China for me is that in many places it is very modern, yet is so intricately linked to the ancient China. I don't think anyone can uh, ever walk away from 5,000 years of history. You know, walking on the Great Wall is still very important, not only for Chinese, uh, for tourists, but also for Chinese people. You know, there is a saying that goes, if a man, a man isn't a man until he hasn't walked on the Great Wall. Exactly. Same for the dragons. They still um, celebrate the dragon dance on their, when they have festivities. And also the moment I, um, I landed, I fell in love with the writing. You know, every single Chinese character has, uh, is a drawing, has a little story. Everywhere I look, everywhere I go, it's always in my face. So I feel that the tradition and culture, the legends and stories in China's everyday life is always present and that is my greatest inspiration. Fascinating and I share your passion for the Chinese characters. This is a fantastic source of inspiration which has been here for millennia uh, actually. Of course, as a foreign artist, living and creating in China, you are having a lot of conversation with your, with the Chinese artists. And how is the dialogue? Is it a fruitful dialogue, Annie, for you? Well, yes. Um, I took a few classes of calligraphy and traditional Chinese art. And the Chinese artists are uh, welcoming and eager to share their knowledge. But in general, I think they are more intrigued by my work because I paint their dragons, their great wall, their uh, lotus flowers, and their calligraphy in my own Western style. So it makes it an interesting blend. And uh, honestly, I think that uh, the response is very positive, but I can't wait to speak Mandarin to be able to truly exchange with Chinese artists. We also are privileged, however, because the artists, um, like they say, a picture is worth a thousand words. So when it's time to communicate, the audience has a visual reference and that really helps the communication. Thank you. Your story, of course, is uh, a very rich story, but at the moment you are a Canadian painter living and working in China. Would you recommend to uh, artists uh, across the world to come to spend time in China in order to be inspired by the Chinese tradition or the changes which are at work in today's China? Yes, of course. If you love adventure, China has a lot to offer. It is a big country with sun and snow, with desert and oceans, with the uh, modern and the most historical. And um, also my Chinese friends would be upset if I did not mention the vast area of great food. <laughs> that being said, if you speak Mandarin, your exchange will be so much more fruitful because too often we lose the essence of the conversation and part of the real feelings when your message has to be translated. It's very important to talk about the Chinese economy. This is a very powerful change for the Chinese people and for the world, but I think we should not forget that what is also going on in China at the moment is this intellectual and cultural renaissance. And this is a huge opportunity for the Chinese people, for the Chinese artists, but also for the foreign artists. So it was wonderful to have this conversation with you today, Annie, and thank you to be a part of this era of Chinese opportunities. Thank you, David. Thank you.